Okay, I have to kick this one off with an apology for what I'm about to say. How are you today? Are you ready for this? Are you sure? Are you? Okay, I'm done. I lied. This one's for you. The Aurea is a flat bottom brewer that is currently in its third iteration. Yes, we're fashionably late to the party, as always. Today we'll be reviewing version 3, or more like 3.5, because this is the competition variant of V3 that has some minor improvements. Version 1 and 2 were both made of aluminium, but supply and manufacturing issues combined with some design challenges nearly forced the owner Horia to shut shop when he completely switched to plastic, improved the design, and pretty much resurrected the business. After my chat with him, I have a lot of empathy because his struggle is very relatable to us. But our review of the V3 Basalt will be detailed, critical, and honest as always. But before we get started, this product was sent to us to test and review. No money exchanged hands. They have no say in what we put in this video, and they don't get to watch it before any of you do. Also, a massive thanks to Benki Brewing Tools for helping with all of the logistics and with that out of the way, let's kick things off with design. Okay, so the Aurea is definitely one of the prettier brewers that I've used, but the ceramic origami is still at number one. The first thing you notice is how clean the design is. It's simple, no ridges, no sharp edges, a very pleasing taper, and five large holes that give it superpowers. We'll talk about that very soon. It even feels nice to handle, but it is very slippery. At least this version is, and I've already dropped it multiple times, so luckily it's plastic. The base is made from waste plastic and is an excellent example of upcycling, because they've not only managed to convert something destined for a landfill into something that's useful, it's also lovely to look at, especially when contrasted with the deep black of the body. The marble design also means that every piece is unique, and I kind of love that. The main body that I just mentioned is made of a thick, rigid, and very sturdy feeling polycarbonate that has excellent thermal insulation. Stick around to see how this fares in our tests. Yep, I just tried to hook you with the promise of a thermal test. We've clearly mastered the art of YouTube retention. The last thing worth mentioning before moving on to how this thing performs are the size options. This one here is the large and is capable of brewing anywhere from 10 to 36 grams of coffee, while the smaller one, which is identical except for the height, can do a smaller range of 10 to 18 gram doses. Okay, this isn't about the brewer, but can we just take a second to appreciate this Sense cup? It's so beautiful and has become my go-to for filter coffee. Okay, so how's the coffee that comes out of this thing? Now, there's no dearth of pour over brewers, so let's just cut to the chase and talk about what's different and whether the Aurea is worth considering if you're in the market for a flat bottom brewer. So the first thing you'll notice is the flow rate. This is a fast brewer. You'll be surprised at how much quicker it is than say the Kalita or even the Stag X. You may be wondering why speed matters so much. Well, say you save roughly a minute and a half every brew and you brew twice a day, then you save three quarters of a day every year. That's 18 extra hours that you could spend worrying about how AI is gonna take away your job. However, these minutes add up far more quickly if you run a busy cafe. For every two Kalita brews, you could probably serve three Aureas and that's a big deal. The other big advantage is the grind size options that open up on the finer end. We've been able to grind a lot finer on the Aurea before hitting the wall of astringency and bitterness, making it a versatile brewer that allows you to extract the same coffee in very different ways. Now the Aurea is designed to work with Kalida wave filters. The smaller 155 filters fit in the small Aurea and either the 155 or the 185 fit fine in the large one that we have here. These do a good job and we've managed some really tasty brews, but they do tend to have the worst bypass when compared to most other filter shapes. For those of you who don't know, bypass is when some of your brew water finds ways to go around the coffee bed instead of going through it and thereby not really contributing to the extraction process. Kind of like me walking around my problems and asking Namisha to deal with them. This brings me to another thing that sets the Aurea apart. You can use it with these experimental flat filters. These adhere to the smooth walls, dramatically reducing bypass and allowing for more efficient brews with higher and more even extractions. 
just remember that your brew times are going to go up quite a bit with these filters because there's less airflow and bypass so you will need to tweak your recipes. Now you could technically put these into other flat bottom brewers and reap similar benefits but it's an absolute nightmare getting them in and not seeding them correctly can be detrimental to your brews. Fine, that's a tad dramatic, but you'll be causing more problems than you're solving. So say hello to this odd looking tool, the negotiator. Cool name. That fits perfectly into the Aurea, making it much easier to situate the flat filters. You may be tempted to just shove the paper in, but you'll likely end up with this garbage. If you've been struggling with this, don't worry, we got you covered. With a little bit of rudimentary origami, a gentle twist and a dash of luck, your negotiation skills will be on fire. Speaking of negotiation skills, if you all can get this video to 500 likes, then we'll compose a cool custom track for the next video like we did for the Time More one. Also, if you enjoy our content, then take a second to subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. Okay, back to the origami. All you need to do is fold the paper in half and crease it, then open it, rotate it 90 degrees, fold it again and open it up again. Then here's the secret. Flip the paper over so the outside of the creases are now on top and then center the paper on the Aurea, place the negotiator at the intersection of the creases and gently push till all four creases bend inwards. Then continue pushing down with a slow clockwise twist and you'll see the creases bend and form four perfect folds to seat the paper immaculately. You can then flip the whole thing over, pour a little bit of water into the holes to set the paper in place and boom. It's deeply satisfying once you nail this technique. I would avoid jamming the paper in too tightly with the negotiator as it seems to increase the chances of stalling. Now these flat filters have a crepe on one side and a smooth surface on the other and we found that we get higher flow rates with the crepe on the outside. But yes, even with those gaping holes below, you can still stall this brewer. But we'll get to some of the cons in a second. So let's wrap this segment up first. The last thing that gives the Aurea a slight edge is thermal stability particularly this version, which uses a polycarbonate that has one of the lowest thermal conductivities. It apparently performs a little better than the polyamide used in the standard version. And as you can see on screen here, it has the slowest temperature decline when compared to the plastic V60 and a preheated Stagex over a period of five minutes. Okay, coming to some of the cons, and honestly, there aren't too many, but the biggest one would be stalling. Now, this is considerably better than the competition, so it's hard to complain too much, but there is room for a little improvement, so I thought it's worth a mention. The second is the material. While plastic is great in terms of thermal stability, it does wear a lot quicker than metal, glass, and ceramic. We've only had this for a couple of months and we've already noticed a bunch of obvious scratches. Plastics in general also make a lot of people uncomfortable, especially when it means using it with hot liquids. But in terms of ease of use, cost and performance, it's a really hard material to beat. So we don't really have a good alternative at this point. Now the brewer and the base at 35 quid or $45 is pretty competitive, especially given that it's built really well. But say you want to use the flat filters, then that's an additional 18 quid or $23 for the negotiator and the filters themselves start at around 3x the price of the Kalita ones. Now, I'd rather be spending that kind of money on a blue tick for Instagram. Anyway, the whole package is now a fair bit more expensive, so that is something to be aware of. But yeah, that's about it in terms of negatives. It's a really short and rather nitpicky list. So let's move on to the fun stuff, brewing. So when it comes to brewing with the Aurea, a great starting point would be to check out the recipes on their website. I've pasted a link in the description below. They have a wide variety ranging from a single pour with no bloom all the way to six pours at various grind sizes. I highly encourage playing around and seeing what gives you the brews you enjoy most. It's a great way to experiment and learn in the process. That being said, recipes are great if you're new to brewing, but as you brew and taste more coffee, you start to realize that they work better as a guide rather than a rigid set of rules. With experience, you learn how to make changes and tweaks on the fly based on the merit of the coffee and how the brew is progressing. So here are some tips and techniques we've been using to get some pretty amazing results on the Aurea and also troubleshoot when things go sideways. Number one, don't try to hit the same brew times as you do with other flat bottom brewers like the Kalita. 
The Aurea is a much faster brewer and at the same grind size, you'll hit the same extraction quicker. As I just mentioned, this brewer is not immune to stalling, so here are a few things you can try if you're struggling to save those 18 extra hours a year. If you don't get that joke, then you've clearly skipped ahead. Shame on you. So in a nutshell, it would be to reduce agitation and you can try one or more of these to see if they sort things out. You can make your pores more gentle or use something like a mellow drip reduce the number of pours, reduce swirls and stirs, avoid pushing the negotiator down too hard when using the flat filters, grind a little coarser. And the thing we've been having most fun with is switching to center pours or using a combo of center and circle pours. If your brews aren't as clean as you'd like and a bit too intense, then consider doing more center pours and less circle. On the other hand, if the acidity is out of control and your brews are a bit hollow and unbalanced, then introduce more circle pours. It takes a little bit of practice to figure out when to use one over the other, but gives you so much control over the brew time and extraction that it's almost like a superpower. In fact, we're seriously considering doing an entire video on this, so if that's something you'd be into, then let us know in the comments below. And lastly, if you're using a pulse pour recipe, then don't just follow the numbers to the T. Start the next pour based on how quickly it's drawing down. If it's slow, then wait a little longer. If it's going too quick, then do the opposite and start a little earlier and maybe even introduce a little bit of agitation to promote some fines migration and slow down the brew. So yeah, it's a very versatile brewer. And in fact, we've been really enjoying some lower TDS around 1.35% brews of late. But like I said, play around with it and you'll find what works for you. Okay, so our go-to flat bottom has been the fellow Stag X for a while now. And we even did a detailed video on it linked up here. When comparing the two, they perform very similarly in terms of thermal stability once the stag was preheated, but in terms of ease of use, the Aurea definitely came out ahead. It requires no additional preheating other than the quick paper rinse. The flow rate is much better courtesy the massive holes below. And lastly, I prefer the straight wall profile as opposed to the curved inner wall of the stag, which seat wavy filters more constricted, making the opening even smaller. This makes it harder to prevent pouring directly onto the waves and causing excessive bypass. The inner shape also makes it much more challenging to get flat and conical filters to sit inside the stag properly. So while we still love it for being all metal and yet having good heat retention, the Aurea just has it beat on all other counts. I mean, it's not some magic brewer that'll instantly transform your shitty brews into competition winning ones, but as far as flat bottom brewers go, this is a big step in the right direction and I'm very excited to see what Horia comes up with in version 4. Unrelated, but we also really want to try the April Brewer, so we'll probably reach out to Patrick Rolf about that. But anyway, now we'd love to hear from you. Have you used this brewer and what has your experience been? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for watching and brew Aramse.